CMIS really, really led us down a road to more enhanced data integration and, um, you know, like the mapped export being a real big part of that, uh, integrating our CMIS connectivity with like really powerful SQL searches and, and everything. So there's, there's quite a lot you can do um, with the CMIS stuff. Now, um, to the degree that even some of the older forms of uh, document export, like the um, file system export and uh, things like it, or even cl uh, classified in a group and group are called legacy uh, export. So, you know, the, the mapped export via CMIS connections is really kind of the future of what Grouper is doing. Um, and what I'll show you guys today, we'll start with um, brand new functionality in Grouper 2.9, which is the uh, CMIS lookup. So uh, here in the wiki, once again, in the what's new area of 2.9, um, and of course on the front page still, um, there is an article about the CMIS lookup. So I'm gonna pull that one up here. And this article, um, I'll, you know, I'll be discussing what this article generally covers. Um, so uh, feel free to take a look at this article to give it a read through. Um, and anyway, let's let's go ahead and get started uh, with Grouper. So, well, before actually I get to Grouper, I wanted to talk about the source. So I have here um, our SharePoint uh, environment for the Grouper education team. And, uh, you know, one of the things I did to uh, enable what I'm doing in Grouper is if I go to the site contents of this particular SharePoint area, um, I made a separate document library uh, for this CMIS uh, lookup uh, situation we have. And when I go to this, inside this SharePoint is just this uh, one document. So if I take a look at this document, um, it's just a simple um, document I made. Um, probably looks familiar if you were on the earlier uh, webinar. But one of the things that I did also is in the actual SharePoint environment, um, you know, you've got uh, just the one row right now because it's the one document, but you have these default um, columns that you know, that SharePoint will come with, the name, the modified, and modified by. But if you scroll to the side, you have this ability to add a column. And so I went through the process of um, adding a bunch of columns, and uh, I've got employee ID, and then, you know, first name, last name, social, phone number, email, gender, IP, street address, street name, city, state, zip. Now, obviously, uh, hopefully everyone would be aware that none of this information is real. It's all dummied up. So anything you see here is not actually, um, you know, person personally identifiable or anything. But um, if I click on this document here in the area and I go to the information of it, I can see uh, in this column on the right that I uh, actually have the values. And of course, I could change these if I wanted to or something. But these are currently the values uh, of these columns for this particular document. So what I'm gonna do um, is I'm going to set up something that I'm going to allow myself to enter in the employee ID uh, in Grouper and it will pull back the rest of this information. Now, were I to extract this value, that would be completely reasonable too. So upon extraction, um, you know, it would it, you know pull that value in and then once it does that, it would populate the rest of the fields via the lookup. Um, so if anyone has a request to see that, that's fine. But what I'm going to show is there's a tester where I can put in the value and I tab out of the field and it'll it'll uh, actually populate the rest. So it's the same end result. Um, so let me minimize this and I'll hop into Grouper. And so here in the Grouper environment, uh, I'll minimize this for a moment in this and we'll just focus on the infrastructure area. And we've got this folder here for CMIS connections. So what I want to do to connect to that environment is pretty straightforward. I want to create a new CMIS connection. So I'm going to add this connection and I'm just going to call it um, SharePoint 01 for now. So when we make a SharePoint connection, what we want to do is first choose the connection type. So in this drop down uh, for the connection type property, I have a, you know, you know, a variety of stuff here, everything from application extender to box to, I can, you know, CMIS connect to NTFS file systems and uh, exchange uh, mail servers. And what I'm gonna pick is the SharePoint. So from here, uh, what we wanna do is we have a base URL and, uh, you know, authentication method, which the only option for this, uh, 
you know, when we put in the URL, it's going to be OAuth, I believe. And then there's a couple of other properties I want to uh, pay attention to here. So there's enable subsites and enable library types. So there's a couple of different ways to map a um, CMIS connection for something like SharePoint. Um, you can either put in the URL that goes to a specific uh, subsite that you want to work with, or you can uh, put in the URL to the entire parent, you know, like Teams directory, and you can uh, connect to subsites via it. Um, there might be advantages to doing one over the other, like for the one where I put in the a longer URL to the direct subsite, um, it would be uh, a little less overhead, um, but you know it would be specifically to that subsite. Whereas putting in the base URL for like the parent site, um, that one connection could give me access to any and all subsites, um, but it has a bit more overhead as a result. So it really comes down to, do you want more connection objects in your node tree or fewer? And if you know you want to manage individual SharePoint connections via individual um, you know subsites, you can, or you can do it the other way. I'll show you both. So um, I'm going to put in the, uh, subs the, the site here for the subsite. So instead of going to the, the main SharePoint.com, I'm going to go to this specific uh, library. And um, so now I will uh, put in an OAuth. And this is actually pretty cool. It's very straightforward. Um, I just click the connect. It pulls up a Microsoft Office 365 uh, connection thing. I will uh, give it my creden credentials. And of course, I'm a, um, I pay good attention to my IT requirements and have dual factor authentication. So I'm going to approve this on my phone and boom, it's connected. So um, from here, I want to uh, make sure I enable library types because I'm already in a subsite. I don't necessarily need to enable that. So I will click save and list repositories. So, I want to enable library types because I want to be able to get at document and folder, specifically document. Uh, I haven't really done much with the folder style object, but you have what's called CMIS content types uh, in uh, Grouper. And to, in order to get to the document content type, I have to enable that library uh, setting. So when I uh, list the repository, you see it here with the red dot. And what I want to do is import this uh, repository and it will go to a green dot. Uh, and in doing so, a new object is made in Grouper in it with several sub objects. So I get this uh, CMIS repository object and it has within it uh, a content types folder and then the two content types, it's the document and folder. So were I not to have um, en enabled the library types for this particular connection, I would not be able to expand document and see these uh, sites within the SharePoint environment. So this document library that uh, I showed you a minute ago in SharePoint on the browser is this object here. So right now, if I wanted to do a lookup and if I were to click on this guy, you can see the uh, writable properties that I uh, mentioned to you when I showed you in the uh, browser. So the name, employee ID, right? The, everything down to you know the address and everything. So you can actually see that here. And I know that this is the one I want to work with. So again, if, if I wanted to do a lookup at this point, I don't really need to import this uh, library. I, I could be done from here. Um, but in order to do a, a document export and do mapped export to it, I would have to import the type. Um, I don't need to for this particular thing because I, I'm just gonna do a lookup. Um, but I wanna you know, be clear of where I'm at here. So I wanna do the lookup off this one. Now what I mentioned earlier and um, is the, uh, the different way to connect to this instead of going to the straight subsite, um, I can make another connection here. And when I set this to SharePoint as well, and I'll put in the site, I'll take off this bit here and just go straight to the SharePoint.com area. Same thing, I will uh, OAuth authenticate. Again, get my approval code, or I use the app, so I just can press the approve button, which is kind of nice, and it's good to go. So what I want to do with something like this is I not only want to enable the library types, but I also want to enable subsites.
And the reason is because in order for me to get to the subsites uh, that I want to get to, it has to be enabled as well as the library type so I can create the CMIS connection object if I wanted to. So again, I'll list the repository. And now at this point, this is the entire base uh, site for um, BIS. So I'm gonna import this guy and you'll see it'll probably take a little bit longer because it's you know, having to pull everything in and it recognizes all those uh, subsites. So now, the same thing as this one here, uh, I get my uh, CMIS uh, repository object and then the content types folder and the two types. So I can see again that because I enabled library types, I've got my document here, but as you can see here, it's every single site within our library. Uh, it's not just the stuff that was specific to my Project Apollo one here. So if I wanted to find my site, I would have to find it within here, which I believe it was closer here to the bottom. And you could see like, I mean, why having a big thing here might be a little bit much, but um, where is my grouper wiki one? It's just a lot. <laughs> oh, there we go. So there's my project Apollo and the CMIS uh, guy here. So if I wanted to, I could see the writable properties there. And uh, from here, I could uh, import this if I needed to do mapped export and so forth. But what I, you know, again, I don't need to do that for this. I'm just doing a lookup. We'll do that uh, in a minute when I actually do uh, an export with a different uh, CMIS connection type. So um, from here, what I want to do is uh, show you the lookup. So this is, you know, these two connections and I'll kind of show you uh, why one might be better than the other when doing something like this or not, but it just comes down to preference and maybe what you're trying to do. So within my content models area here, I have this CMIS lookup model that I made that's really simple. Um, all, it doesn't even have a doc type or a local resources library. It's just <clears throat> my data model. And I have fields for um, you know, all the stuff that I wanna get. So I'm gonna get my employee ID and then you know, I'm going to let it populate the rest of this information um, for me once the uh, lookup fires. Um, so let's do that now. So I set a lookup now in grouper 2.9 on the, the parent category area, in this case, the data model. You no longer set the lookups on individual data elements like uh, data fields or columns or something like that. Um, you could perform the lookup on like the data section or in this case, again, the data model. That's how that works. So that property is now here on the data model, the lookups uh, property within the uh, behavior section. So I'm going to click on this property and click the ellipsis button and pull up the uh, lookup specification collection editor. And I can now add a lookup of several different types. And now again, new to 2.9 is the CMIS lookup. So because I imported that repository, I can select it here, which I need to do on the repository property. And I'll start with this uh, BIS OK team site here. And uh, now the really the next thing to do is to just write the query. Um, so I click on this ellipsis button to pull up the CMIS query area, uh, editor. And you know, every link uh, query, the SQL queries that you know are in the link world now, they start with a from statement. Um, technically, I'm going to select from. Uh, so I mean, I'm still sort of starting with a from. Um, but if you'll notice that when I start to type, I've got my IntelliSense and um, I can immediately just you know, tap, you know, arrow down into that and tab. And if I space, it already wants to recognize the contents of that um, CMIS repository that I made. So um, here, just like I was doing earlier, I would have to scroll through here and find where that um, particular um, subsite is and I could click on it from there. So I have access to everything with this object, but it's just a big long list and it might be cumbersome. Um, if I didn't want to deal with this big long list, I could cancel this and instead go back to the one that was pointed at the you know specific subsite. So now when I go into its CMIS query and start again with my select and do spacebar, so I, my from list is much smaller, right? And I know that I want to do this from sites you know, Apollo, and then the lookup, the CMIS lookup uh, document library that I made. So I'll arrow down to that and hit tab. And you'll notice now I'm selecting what from something. So I know where I'm getting it from, but now I need to know what I'm selecting. 
So uh, in this case, you know, I've got um, the, the cursor went immediately back to um, uh, right in front of the select statement, which is good because it, I want to go from there to the next part. From here, if I, and now if I immediately press spacebar, um, the select statement, the query that I'm writing has uh, full awareness of um, everything within this, uh, oh, that's a folder. I don't want the folder. I want the document. I need to try that again. So do from, so this, I see I went to folder instead of document. That was my mistake. So I'll do the CMIS lookup uh, document, not folder. So I'll tab that. My cursor goes back in front of my select, press space. And I have um, IntelliSense awareness of all of the columns or, you know, the writable properties of this, uh, you know, CMIS connection, this subsite, this library of uh, SharePoint here. So I'm going to start with my um, first thing here. I'll get the first name. So I can just arrow down the first name and I'll comma space and I can get everything here. So comma space, I'll go first name, uh, last name, and I'm just tabbing from it within that menu to fill it out. Uh, so comma space again, I'm gonna get a uh, phone number after that. And then I'm gonna do email address. But one thing I wanna point out here is that email address is listed in the uh, SharePoint as email underscore address, but my content model has a data field called email. So to compensate for that, I'll select the thing from the SharePoint. So arrow down to it, tab, and I want to do a space. And immediately it knows that I want to do an as because I want to tell it it's, you know, what I'm selecting from the SharePoint environment, but it's going to populate something in the model that's named something different. I didn't need to do the as statements for everything else because first name, first name, it's named exactly the same, right? Last name's the same, so forth. So you only have to do the as when you know the two things don't match up so i'll do an as and then now this has an awareness after i you know tab the as and space again of everything within my model so you can see here um <clears throat> that email is what it's listed as in the model so i'll arrow down to it and tab and boom it puts it in the quotes for me single quotes for me and everything so pretty easy so i'll just continue this through i'm going to get gender and i'm going to do um SSN after that, and then I'll get IP address, street name, or street number, name, city, state, and zip, right? So we'll do street name next, or number, sorry. We'll do street name. And you'll notice too, uh, if, <clears throat> if you haven't already, as I'm populating this select portion of my statement, the uh, columns that are in the CMIS environment, the SharePoint environment, sorry, that I've selected are no longer listed here. So um, except for the ones that did an as statement for, it still lists that for some reason, but everything else like first name, last name uh, is no longer listed. So it makes my list a little bit shorter, which is pretty cool. So street uh, number, street name, and then I'll get the city, state. I got a quick question for you, Randall. Uh huh. I just noticed uh, as you're entering and as you're entering in those uh, data elements of your data model, you're entering them basically in order that you have them in your data model. That's not strictly necessary, though, is it? No, uh, not from my awareness. It isn't. It just happens to be the way I wanted to do it. Uh, I think I'm a bit OCD sometimes, probably. <laughs> uh, but no, I don't believe it has to be in that order. It just has to select it properly from the uh, CMIS connection. Well, cool. yeah, and that makes sense because it may not necessarily be in that order in the ultimate source uh, repository that you're pulling from, right? Right, yeah. Um, I, I, again, I think just because of my uh, means of doing things, I probably just set them up exactly the same way just because of my brain. <laughs> um, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so we'll notice here again we have another uh, example of uh, you know the <clears throat> column in the SharePoint is listed as postal code, but in grouper I have it listed as uh, zip. So I'll do another space and again it sees the as. I can just arrow that and then I wanna pick SSN or zip in this case and that is it. So now I've got 
my select, I've got my from, and I actually just learned this recently, but um, I, you can put the uh, a different portion of your statement on a different line, uh, which is cool. So again, just like a SQL statement. Um, so now that I've got my, um, my select, what I'm selecting and from, I can do a where statement. So I either could have pressed space there to continue that line, or when I did enter, it lets me do the same thing. And uh, I'm not gonna do an order by, I'm gonna do a where. Uh, and again, all I had to do is press enter and IntelliSense picked that up and knew, uh, gave me the options of what I might possibly do. Um, so here I'm just going to tab where and space and what I'm going to get from here is again a list of uh, things from the uh, CMIS connection, the column names in that SharePoint environment. So I want to select, you know, I told you from the beginning that I was going to fire this off of the uh, employee ID. Uh, so I'm going to select employee ID and tab that or I'm just gonna double click it here. And now what I have to do is I have to uh, have it equate to a variable within grouper that it can you know, communicate with. So this syntax is an equal sign and you see here it does an at. So I'm going to have this do at uh, employee ID. So just tab that as well. And boom, that's my, that's my statement. It's really straightforward. You know, I uh, start with select as soon as I press you know space it knows that I want to tell it where from because if we, we have to follow it immediately by the from in order for the select to know what these things it could you know list are but that's why it's cool that as soon as we do the from it puts the cursor back in front of the select and you know I press space from there like you saw and I was able to put all these in pretty easily so the IntelliSense does a really good job of uh, kind of guiding you. And honestly, I think this is one of those areas where uh, the grouper help is quite useful too, because um, it's easy to gloss over the grouper help because um, you're just clicking around in grouper so frequently. Um, but the developers have done a really good job uh, with the grouper help, especially recently in some of these newer functionalities of uh, telling you what to do, how to start things even, and even giving you examples if you're unfamiliar with this kind of syntax that you can try to figure out. And I'll 100% admit that uh, my SQL querying is pretty much limited to select star from in most cases. So um, uh, I was able to figure out this uh, syntax for this lookup just by following the help, which is really cool. All right, so now that this is set, I'm just gonna click OK. And from here you can see that uh, the lookup field and target field properties are uh, now populated for me. Um, and these are dynamically generated based on, you know, the information it got from that query that I did. Um, so this is done and I can test it from here. So I'll do that. And I'm also going to show you how to do it in the data model preview. So if I just click the uh, test lookup button here, um, the lookup field that I want is listed here. So if I put in the number that I know I want to get, so I know her uh, employee ID is 166. So if I put that in and press tab, boom, it fires and um, gives me the rest of that information uh, there. So um, pretty slick. Um, now, like I said, we can also uh, click OK here to close this. And then the data model uh, preview, if I just press put in 166 and tab, it will pull the rest of that in uh, for me as well. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I think, yeah, we could even see it here if we wanted to. Um, now, like I said, I could have this uh, extract for me, right? And that would do it. So let me just set that up and so you don't have to see me put it in manually. Uh, but if, if I just go to my field, I'm just going to put in a, um, an extractor just right on this. So I'll do a text pattern and I'll set the pattern here. I'm just going to do a look ahead or we now call this prefix pattern uh, and suffix pattern. So prefix to the left, suffix to the right. So you may have uh, gotten used to this being called look ahead and look behind, but that's now different as well. Um, so I'm just going to look for employee. But the functionality is exactly the same, right? It's just correct. Like yeah. Um, and I'll just put in a simple regex pattern here. So there, there's employee ID. So this would now extract if I were to uh, test this, I would get that and hey, I still got my annotations on. <laughs> so if I go back up to the model here and test extraction, it's only extracting that one value there. But then of course, as a result of the lookup, it gives me everything else. Um, and this was, uh, you know, a useful document to show this on um, because, you know, this is an employee report and it shows earnings. Um, so really the only things I could extract from here 
are, you know, these earnings amounts, her employee ID and the name. Um, if I needed my model to return the rest of this information, uh, it's not on the document. So a lookup becomes critical in this situation because um, none of this information is listed on this document. It is, however, listed in that repository and I can pull it back that way. So, um, yeah, and so that's that's a, a lookup with CMIS now. And I'm sure you guys have done lookups before, but again, now in 2.9, uh, they're not done on the uh, individual elements. They're done at the parent level um, and we have it fire off on all this. All right, so yeah, now what I will do is show a um, connection to box. Um, same kind of thing, um, and with this connection, I'm also going to show a mapped export, uh, how we set that up, and you know what that looks like. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a new connection type here in my CMIS connections. I'll add a CMIS connection, and I'll just call this box. Um, so what we want to do is click the connection type property and in the drop down, I'm going to select box.com. And, um, so this is a uh, fairly easy to set up. Uh, we have to use what's called a box user ID. So if you've not used box before, or you're just getting used to it, um, you know, you'd go into your account settings and the uh, number would be listed there. Um, so I'm not going to put up my number here cause that would be, uh, bad form but just to kind of show you I mocked up an image uh, you know and in the account settings you can scroll down and then there's this account ID uh, thing here so what I'm gonna do real quick to finish making um, this connection is just drop my screen share so I don't paste it up on the, for the world to see and we'll come right back in but before I do that there's this um, use metadata uh, property that I want to turn on so in box um, and we'll, I'll show this afterwards. When you uh, connect, you know, there'll be a file here soon when I do the export and uh, metadata is what is, it, it calls the uh, writable properties that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna turn this to true and then I'll put in my ID real quick and pop right back in here. So let me do that. All right, so um, I've got that put in there and I set that property like I mentioned earlier. And now here's the uh, repository uh, connection object. So same thing like before, I'm going to import this repository. And boom, I get my green dot. So now I've got the objects like we had before. I've got the, uh, you know, the all files, CMIS repository object, and uh, the, you know, content types listed here. So in a case like this, um, because I told it to uh, use the metadata, I can see the different uh, areas that have um, writable metadata properties on them. So the one I'm going to use is this um, this uh, grouper wiki one. So th in this case, I'm going to uh, import the entire uh, branch. So I just click on this guy, click the import types drop down and entire branch. So now it won't refresh here. If I uh, click off and then back on it, you'll see that I have a green dot, meaning that this uh, repository has been imported. So now if I come over here, you can see that I've got this grouper wiki um, CMIS uh, content type uh, within the document area, not folder. And so you can see the type properties, the writable properties that I have for this thing. This is what I can uh, ex export and send uh, the information to. So um, what I want to do from here I, after I've imported it and I select this new newly created item, the uh, CMIS content type item, uh, there's a couple different things I can do. If I'm wanting to bring something in from that environment for whatever reason, I'd want to import. Um, but what I'm showing you guys is going to be an export. So what I want to do is uh, export enable, set that to true. Um, so I want to select a content type uh, so that I know how I'm going to map uh, my properties. So to do that, I just click this export content type property, click the drop down, and you know I could either select a content model or some other category. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select the entire content model here uh, as it has the you know the fields that I want. So it's this box CMIS binding uh, content model. All right, so once I, I do that, it has an awareness of the field mappings that I can do. So I'll click on the export field mappings property and pull up this menu. So from here, um, you know, if I have things that are named similarly, I can right click in this property grid and I can tell it to auto map. So first name and last name it immediately recognized and mapped them for me. Um, now ID is not named exactly like it is there, so I'll tell it to use employee ID. 
And uh, object type ID, I'm going to leave this blank. It's probably going to balk at me, but that's okay. I don't need it. I can write to it without it, but I do want to put a name. So what I'm going to do here is write a little expression that will just pass the content type name uh, of the object uh, that's being exported upon export. So I'm going to pull this up. It's a really straightforward expression. So it's just current and I've got IntelliSense here. So current document and I'll tab that and then dot and I have sub uh, objects I can call. So I'm going to do content type name. So the current document, what's the content type name? And that will uh, populate that field for me. Okay, so that's set. Now, the next thing that we have to do to do a document export is that we have to have a document that has uh, index data on it. So normally when we're you know, looking at our um, model and we go to like the data model or you know, click on a field and test extraction, um, you know, that's just in memory. Um, while I see the values here, they're not actually written to the document yet. Um, in order to get index data on the document, uh, you have to actually run an extraction uh, activity. Now you can do that from extraction testing. If I click on that, this tab from the content or from the data model and I extract the data from here, it will uh, write that file for me and I can review that data. Um, I can make a batch process step and uh, you know, use the tester tab and extract uh, from there. Um, I can also just you know, go to a batch viewer and run the activity for extract. And again, that would also write that file. So any one of those three methods would write the file that we want. Now this uh, uh, document already has it written to it because I just did it earlier. So if I click on the batch and I expand it, I expand the uh, batch folder and here is the uh, document in question. So from batch to batch folder to document. So um, if we select this document and go to its files, I've got this grouper document data.json file that's associated with it because extraction was run against it. So just keep that in mind on page objects, you know, you get things like your layout data and your character data, but the actual index data that's extracted is on a document, not the page. And so here's that data and we can see everything that it extracted, what the XY coordinates were of it on the document. That's what, you know, actually allows the little green box to be drawn. So once you have this data, you can actually do that, you know, in your own environment. If you wrote some kind of app that took this data, you can see highlighting outside of Grouper, which is pretty cool. But um, I have this data now in this file and this, that means that it's ready to, you know, export. So uh, where I would do that is I could just um, a couple different ways. So I could go to uh, a batch viewer anywhere in Grouper and um, I can see here that we actually need to change this because I updated it. And so that's correct now. So I've got this data here and what I want to do from here is I can uh, right click on my batch folder and do a contents apply activity. And um, from here, I could choose a mapped export. So this will be or document export. And within this, I'll ex uh, expand the properties and set it to mapped. So here we got the uh, mapped export of the different things that are available. Uh, so these are the new ones uh, with CMIS. Uh, the legacy ones here are, are available as well, but I want to do a mapped export. Um, so once I set that, I can click to uh, expand the settings and I'm going to do that. So from here, what I want to do is, um, and just to make call it out real quick, we don't have a file here yet in this uh, box environment. Um, I'm going to set my CMIS repository to that uh, guy that I imported here. And then my target folder is um, the folder within that environment that I imported. So to uh, make that clear that um, that second import that I did for the entire branch for the, you know, the uh, grouper wiki uh, subfolder, that's what this is going to select. So any of the other subfolders that I imported here like this, you see the CMIS content type object here will be what I have listed. So this is the folder that I want it to go into. Uh, update link, I'm leaving that false. Um, you know, I'll ultimately dispose of this batch when it's done. So I don't need the link of the object in grouper to be linked to the CMIS 
or to the document that's in that CMIS library. It's not necessary. That can be really useful though if you're doing something after the document export though. So in a recent situation that I worked with, um, you know, we had like a secondary uh, review step that we did. So we were connecting the application extender and sending the document out. So we had one level of review that our clerks were doing. And then um, the uh, manager of that department uh, would review it from application extender uh, to make sure that everything was kosher. So if she changed a value while an application extender, um, she would then, you know, it would then push back to grouper and uh, get updated for a final export from there. But in this case, I don't need to do that. And it's just in that situation, updating the link would be very handy. Um, so I'm gonna use the default content format. I don't need to change anything else here. Um, ignore unmapped items. So that, uh, in, that property I mentioned earlier, the object ID, I think is what it was called. Uh, it, it would balk at us for that being uh, blank, but um, when I tell it to ignore unmapped items, it won't yell at me. And then there's just a, conflict resolution. Do I want to name uniquely or do I want to overwrite? What do I want to do? Um, but yeah, that's good to go. So I'll click OK there and execute. And I don't need seven threads, but I'll just let it run. And it's done. So I'll close that. If we pull up box now, if I refresh this, we'll see here that I have this newly exported document here. If I pull it up, um, here's the document like we expect, great. But then there's this metadata area here in box that has these fields uh, that have now been written to it. So, you know, this would be queryable uh, with those properties within the box environment now. Um, another means by which, you know, we could do this export would be again, like if I had like a batch process or something, um, and let's just add something here since we have a batch process. If I just added a step, I could set this to document export and do the same thing that I did for that thing I did on the fly there. So I'd click this, I'd set my settings, pick this guy, my target folder. And this is a property that's uh, unique to Box. So it would be slightly different for a CMIS connection to something like SharePoint. Um, update link, I'll tell it false true and ignore unmapped and I'll have it overwrite again. So if I were to click OK on that and save it, I could now expand this uh, batch process and click on this individual step and use my um, unattended activity tester. And when I process from here, it will again push it out to the box environment. Um, and so those would be the, you know, the couple of different ways that you could actually run that. So. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, that's uh, how to connect to different, uh, you know, CMIS uh, libraries. Um, the document export is mapped again. You know, we'd go all the way down to this object here that was imported from here because we told it to enable the metadata, which allows us to import this object and makes the CMIS content type. And I can set my uh, content uh, type there and set my mappings. And of course that will allow me to export when I have something that has index data associated with it. Of course, this is another way to see that other than clicking on the file. If index data is not populated, then that stuff's not there. But if I change this though, I think I can save it from here and it would actually affect the file. Whereas when I was just doing it earlier, it wasn't actually writing it. So this is now updated this JSON file with that information that I just gave it. There's the employee ID. There's the name of the person, Cecilia. You can see it's updated there. So yeah, I think, uh, you know, CMIS connections might be new to a lot of you guys. So hopefully you'll find this um, uh, you know, webinar handy. If even just getting started, I remember when I first started uh, connecting the CMIS uh, environments, I wasn't quite sure what to do. Um, so maybe just getting to see me do it a couple different ways will help you get your feet wet with uh, CMIS connections and knowing how to do lookups with the you know CMIS QL querying that we have available and uh, you know everything else. So um, Jesse, Dylan, anybody else have any comments here or see see any questions coming through or anything? Um, I might just expand on that CMIS bit a little bit. Um... Because, yeah, I agree with you. It took me a while to wrap my bread, or excuse me, wrap my head around 
those CMIS bindings and how to connect those sources at first as well. But, uh, you know, kind of once you know one, especially when it comes to doing these import mappings and export mappings, you know, once you know one, you more or less know them all. The only difference between the bindings is really how to connect. Maybe some slight differences here and there, but there's a lot of similarities with that uh, kind of unified CMIS plus architecture. So, you know, start yeah. small with something that you can wrap your brain around and then you'll you'll uh, quickly find that you can utilize those other bindings uh, after that. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the, the hard part to get to educate people on is the actual environments themselves like i'm not going to do an exhaustive overview of everything the box can do i'm sure one of their sales people could do that for you you know um same thing with sharepoint you know i there's no way that uh i'm going to tell you everything that sharepoint's capable of uh so really sometimes the hurdle for people connecting these cmis objects is the actual sources themselves now you can create a cmis connection to an ntfs source and that's immediately available but you can't do uh, mapped uh, export uh, to an NTFS file system uh, because there aren't those writable columns like there are in a content management system. Uh, we do have the ability to do an unmapped uh, export. So if I were to look at that, there's contents, uh, apply activity on my document export. Um, instead of mapped export, I could do an unmapped export and use a CMIS connection to send something to an NTFS file system the same as I could with the old file system export here. It's just slightly different now. And with the CMIS connection to NTFS, you have the uh, increased flexibility of the new CMIS connections, including all the CMIS QL querying that you can do. And you can get really powerful queries made in something like that and do some pretty specific stuff. But, um, you know, the old file system export thing is still here too.